The Leo King will be live shortly. Please hold on while the collective consciousness loads, and thank you for being a part of the Leo King. The Leo King will be live shortly. Please hold on while the collective consciousness loads, and thank you for being a part of the Leo Kingdom. The Leo King will be live shortly. Please hold on while the collective consciousness loads, and thank you for being a part of the Leo Kingdom. The Leo King will be live shortly. Please hold on while the collective consciousness loads, and thank you for being a part of the Leo Kingdom. The Leo King will be live shortly. Please hold on while the collective consciousness loads, and thank you for being a part of the Leo Kingdom. What is going on, everybody? It is David Palmer, the Leo King, and we are doing a special Facebook Live today. We are going to be talking live with uh, Astrology Hub about this awesome forecast for 2017 webinar that's going on with 13 astrologers. Um, and I hope you guys all know that I've been working with Astrology Hub now for a while. I've done uh, the last couple summits and I love to interact with other astrologers and to cover different subjects and for the astrology community to come together. And this has been a really, really fun place to do it. That's why I'm so uh, honored that they asked me to do this summit. And today we're going to do an interview with Amanda, who's with Astrology Hub. So uh, I'm going to get her on in a second. But for all that you guys are out there, please share this video right now on Facebook. I'm going to try and get as many people out there. We will also be in the chat room. So if people have questions, I want to make sure that uh, you know you can hear everything and answer all the questions that are possible. So um, please do the sharing. And we are going to do this right now. So let's bring in Amanda, who I've got uh, right now live from Hawaii up on here. Um, how are you doing, Amanda? I'm doing great, David. Awesome to be here. Thank you so much. For some reason, I, I lost your audio there for a second. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we've we've lost your audio for some reason. Um, okay. Um, I got. No, let I me think try we, and get. I think get we've back got in, you. David. We've got you in. I got you now. Okay. Awesome. You sure you can hear yeah, me? Okay. Yeah, we've got you good. So. You are doing this awesome Astrology Hub Summit. Why don't you tell everybody what it's about and what it's about for 2017? All right. Well, so we did a survey of the entire Astrology Hub community, which now is about 80,000 people. And we asked for their favorite astrologers, who they like the best. And we invited all of those astrologers to be on our forecast event this year. So we did this event last year, and essentially each astrologer is going to go through different aspects of 2017, what we can expect with the eclipses, what we can expect um, you know, with the different transits and everything that's going to be going on. And again, we picked the best of the best and your favorites, and so there's just an amazing crew that's joining, um, of course, including our very favorite, Leo King. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an incredible Yes. Event. And it starts tomorrow. It's Thursday and Friday, and there's three and a half hours of live content that you'll get to access. For Great. So why don't you describe to people how this is going to work as far as what do they have to do to be part of the summit? It's free, correct? It's free. Yep. So, um, David, I'm sure you've shared your link. Yes. On Facebook page. Is that correct? Okay. Great. So just click on the link. All you have to do is enter your name and your email, and then you will get instructions for how to log on to the live uh, forecast. 
And so it starts at 2 o'clock Pacific. It goes to 5 on the first day and 5.30 on the second day. And you can just jump in and out whenever it works for you. Um, and we have a schedule so you can see when your favorite astrologers are speaking and make sure that you don't miss their time. Yeah, so it looks like on the website, I'm actually showing people right now uh, the website with all the different astrologers that are on. Um, why don't you name some of the astrologers uh, that are on for this? Yeah. Well, uh, one of the, the very biggest favorites besides you, David, is um, uh, Deborah Silverman. She's amazing. She's so funny. She's super entertaining. And she really makes astrology easy to understand and learn. So she is actually going to kick off the forecast tomorrow. We also have Adam Gainsburg, who's there. He's just incredible, just an, a beautiful astrologer, really brings a lot of um, depth in. And also, he's very big on the living sky astrology. So understanding the chart uh, by understanding the actual sky, which sometimes there's a disconnect there. Um, Anne Orderly, also, she's super funny. Um, and also another amazingly skilled astrologer at making astrology really easy to understand. And what's, what's great about this is I'm going to be experiencing the content at the same time as you. So they have their talk titles, but I don't actually know what they're going to cover. Um, we'll find out. Tomorrow. Well, that is so awesome. I, I know I'm excited to do it because 2017, there is so much happening. It's kind of crazy. Like when I was looking at all the astrology, I'm like, how in the heck... Uh, when I did my 2017 forecast on YouTube, I'm like, I can't even cover everything. It's so much. I mean, I tried to do a 45 minute video and I left feeling like uh, I still could have covered another 12 days worth. So I think it's great that you guys are having us all pick a certain energy of the year, like a certain like sliver of the year. So the whole year can be covered. What are you the most excited about, uh, about hearing about in 2017 personally? tell me more about this um, but I love to take the information from the forecast and then use it to really um, infuse or um, uh, what would, uh, what's the word I'm looking for anyways to really help me as I'm creating my intentions for 2017 so I did this again I did this last year with the 2016 forecast and there's just little um, aspects that I think are important to inform there's a word to inform my intentions as I'm planning for the year um, and I remember there was a, a period of time last year that uh, Adam Gainsburg actually, he had said something about really making sure that you're taking care of your health. Like in this period of time, I think it was like a couple of months last year. And, and I remembered those words. And when we got to that point in the year, I just made sure that I was doing my yoga, I was doing my meditation, my diet was more dialed, just because he had a kind of, not a warning, you know, not to scare people, but he'd given the advice to just make sure you're taking extra care of yourself at that time. So um, I really think that every angle that they're gonna be covering is, is helpful for us as we're looking at 2017 and what to expect and how to prepare and um, how to really make it a great year for well, everybody. I think that's interesting that you bring it up, uh, especially the eclipse part because we are switching into different eclipses this year. Um, and we do switch every 18 months or so, but sometimes there's like a carryover where it'll be like a couple years of eclipses in a certain sign. And we're really going to be moving into a whole new zone now and off of some major planets. So I think that a lot of people are looking for 2017 as a relief year per se. Um, I think there's a lot more relief than people... Uh, realize uh, and i think that's a good thing but i i think that it's interesting that everybody has such a unique um blend of energy to bring uh, what i'm going to be covering is the nodes that will change which of course bring the change of eclipses and the venus retrograde at zero point that's what i'm going to be focusing on which a lot of people probably are like well what does that mean zero point um that's just the fact that venus will cross over the the zero degree Aries portion of the chart multiple times. And that's an explosion uh, spot. And it's going to be dealing with relationships, projects. And I think that this year, you know, especially with uh, Saturn and Uranus, I'm going to talk about how this year is going to be the, one of the biggest explosions for relationships and projects that we have seen in a long time. So I'm pretty excited. 
All right. So when you when you when you say explosion, <laughs> that can have several different connotations. What do you mean by that? By using that word well, explosion, explosion in a good way, or or like things um, are going to blow up? Explosion, as far as a fire kicking things off, um, things starting in a new way, because it also is the reset zone, right? We always start the new year in paganism, uh, you know, on that March twentieth, and that's the zero degree Aries spot, the zero point, and so. It's almost feeling like a new energy, a new year. I believe that this numerology year one is going to start with the, the Venus transition um, that's going to happen this year. I believe that'll be the big kickstart. Plus, uh, Mars is coming into Aries soon over this point. I don't know if you remember the earthquake in Japan uh, that happened in 2011. That happened on the day Uranus entered zero degree Aries. So that's the kind of explosion that that degree is. It can be crazy like that, or it can be very positive like the sun coming up in the morning. So I think it's going to be very positive, though, for people. I think it's going to give people that kickstart that they've been waiting for in relationships and projects that have been feeling at somewhat of a delay. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So I love to um, Maurice Fernandez. He, his is uh, 2017 as the countdown to 2020. I'd love to hear your insights on what you think he's referring to there, like 2017 being the start of some big, you know, build up to the year 2020. Well, I think that that is a very smart person to say that because this really is the beginning entry of this extreme, and I mean extreme. 2018, 2019, 2020. 2017 is the preparation zone. It's almost like if you were... I'm a, I'm a military guy. I was in the military. It's almost kind of like um, the orders are being called and you know, you're getting your ammo together. You're getting your equipment together. You're getting all of the energy to enter into this extreme time period where the world is going to go through its greatest changes that we've seen in our life. Now, we've seen extreme great change because we went through the 2012 cycle. We've been through um, you know, the changing of an age, literally, uh, age of Pisces into age of Aquarius. I did a movie about it, which is out now. But it's interesting to me to see that this will be where the physical world is going to see its greatest changes we've seen in a long time old traditions ending, new traditions beginning, and we are the creators of that new tradition. We are the creators of this new world. And this is going to be the big, big three years of that world being created. And 2017 is the, is the open kind of, you know, make the flexible adjustments. But 18, 19, and 20 are really when things explode and, and peak off and you know, it's going to be amazing to see this in our lives. Uh, we've never seen anything like this for over. I think when I did my, when you were out in uh, Las Vegas, when I did my conference, I think we had shown it was like over 700 years ago when this much energy came into Capricorn in uh, what we're going to see over this next three years. So it's pretty exciting. Wow. Well, yeah, it'll be really interesting to hear Maurice's spin on that too. And I, I don't think we'll have time to talk about this tomorrow, David, but, and, and maybe you talked about this on your, uh, your YouTube forecast, but what do you think about the, um, the, the presidential, the climate with our new president and all those, th that shift happening? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say this. Do you remember I did the presidential panel uh, thing on astrologyhub.com? And... Um, and people thought I, I was crazy yes. that Donald Trump was going to win. I literally people I, I said it on Astrology Hub. I said, hey, oh, it looks like it's going to be Trump. And um, uh, I, I think that separating from Trump or Hillary or Obama, these are just people. I like to look at the external environment of the universe. And, and that's what I focus on. Based upon that, Saturn and Sagittarius forces us to have our minds blown, believe in things that we've never believed in before, experience new things that we've never experienced. With Uranus trining this, it's forcing us to see things in ways we never believed even possible. A reality TV star guy who gets showered champagne from hookers in Russia is our president. 
That sounds like Saturn in Sagittarius to me. That sounds like Uranus and Aries trine it. That sounds like a solar eclipse in Leo happening this year and a north node entering into Leo. It sounds like the king is showing up. And people have a hard time with that energy. It's, uh, there's no bad energy in astrology. There's no sign that's bad. Leo represents kind of being the pompous king. And that's kind of the time t- energy we're entering into. And people, I think, are looking for that. Now, I'm not saying that maybe he's the man that everybody wants when it comes to that energy, but our collective conscious is expressing it in that sort of a way. And you got to remember, there's over seven and a half billion people on this planet. We don't have control of how they all want it to be expressed either. But some, for some reason, that's how it's being expressed. Yeah. Well, it's interesting too, because Ariel Gutman, who, um, has done a lot with Venus as well. She's calling this her her talk title for um, Friday. I think she goes Friday is Venus in 2017, the year of passionate activism. So that to me means that maybe there's going to be a surge of people actually doing something about their. Yeah, I'm actually doing a screen share to show uh, some of the panelists, and I just I'm showing her picture right now. And yeah, she says Venus in 2017, the year of passionate activism. What? Tell me a little bit more about uh, Ariel. Where did you find her? Oh, she. <laughs> okay, so she is the one who. Um, hold on, she's doing. Uh, the the uh, the Venus, the five pointed yes. Venus star, and she's she's done this whole new like mapping on how to understand the different Venus points in your chart. She is so awesome. She's like. One of these um, brilliant and really connected and tuned in women. I really, really enjoy her talks every single time. She's, she's a little bit of a legend in the astrology world, which is awesome. Um, and so I, I, I'm curious to hear what she's going to say about Venus, because that is her whole thing is, is Venus. She has these um, beautiful mudras, Venus mudras that you can do to embody Venus and, you know, more in your, in yourself and, um, and then she's written a whole book on the, the um, five-pointed star. So it's going to be interesting to see what she has to say. Yeah, about I'm really interested about everything that's going to happen with Venus this year. It's a Venus retrograde year, and it's happening in two signs that are very rare for Venus. Number one, Venus is happiest in Pisces, where it will be in a retrograde. And then it's at detriment, where it's not so happy in Aries. So it's kind of an odd retrograde to happen at this star point, because this is a very weird zone. It hates Aries, but it loves Pisces. So it kind of goes in and out of both. And it's going to learn two very different lessons in the retrograde. So... um, And of course, it's crossing the zero point, which is why I'm going to talk about that. Um... You know, it's an exciting time. And I think people have been waiting for this reset button um, because Venus retrogrades are reset buttons just as much as Mars retrogrades are reset buttons. And I think that they're important for us to pay attention to uh, in, in, in our life. Uh, they make everything change in our physical reality. So... um I think it's super important to make sure that we always follow the Venus retrogrades and see that those are the times that life really goes through its greatest change. Life goes to its greatest, um, you know, moments where we can recreate things. So it looks like we lost Amanda. She got uh, dropped from the call, but I am bringing her back in now. So let's get her right back in now. Um, technology. You got to love it. You know what's so funny is I'm bringing Amanda back in right now and waiting for her to come back in. Um, there has still been so much crazy crap going on, even with the Venus re- or the Mercury retrograde over. It's been crazy. And actually, I do have Amanda back now. Um, Have you been still feeling a little Mercury retrograde stuff this week, even though it's over? Definitely. I mean, in the the biggest way I've been feeling it, though, is not as much through the technology, is more through uh, an over 
overarching feeling of lethargy. Ah. <laughs> There's been like, you know, just kind of like this, it's, it's like wading through mud is, is the feeling that I've had. Um, I don't know if that's just me, but um, I've definitely been feeling that this week. And maybe it's back to, you know, the holidays are over and we're kind of back to the new year and things. But um, yeah, I definitely have been feeling that pretty strong. Yeah, you know, for me, it's been weird because it's like, I told people that Mercury retrograde might be over, but we're not out of the woods yet. Or I said, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And I put a picture of a little like uh, dinosaur up or an alligator. But I think after this full moon, things will get back online. Uh, and that's tomorrow. So I think it's interesting that you're also starting this panel and for the forecast on the full moon, which is the most intense full moon of the year, one of them. It's pretty powerful. And so I think that this is going to be a very powerful summit. Um, I thought that we would go to some questions in the room. We had one question from somebody who asked, um, um, where can we find this summit info on the web, David? I guess the best way to find info on the summit uh, would be, is it at astrologyhub.com? No, the best place is to go to the link that you share. Okay, so if you want to find... Um, the link, go to my Facebook and scroll down. You should see it. I tagged the, the top two photos are on my tagged page. I've got a link there and you could uh, do it right there. Um, and if anybody else has any questions, this is a time to ask straight up the girl of Astrology Hub with me right now live any questions um, that you might have. And a lot of people are saying that they're registered right now, Amanda. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be so... It's going to be so fun to see you all tomorrow. Uh, the other thing we'll be doing is Q&A during the event. So you can bring your questions for the astrologers if there's anything you want to know. Um, and that will be, you know, throughout the forecast. Everyone's going to have a 30-minute slot. So we're, it's going to be very vibrant and active. The last time we had a panel of astrolog astrologers on was the presidential election panel. And um, it got really interesting, especially when they were all on together. So there's going to be periods of overlap between astrologers where they'll be able to go back and forth and talk about different aspects and angles and perspectives. So um, it's going to be an amazing event. I'm super excited. So one of the questions uh, is, do, is there an actual uh, schedule posted of um, the astrologers and their times? There is. Yeah. So if, if I shared that in... The chat with you, David, would you be able to share that with your audience? Yes, I would. Okay. I just did. So we're going to have, um, we're going to kick off with Deborah Silverman tomorrow from 2 to 2.30 Pacific. And then Adam Gainsburg, Anne Orderly, Monique Lorink, Kathy Beal, Divine Harmony. That's going to be the first day. Actually, will you and send it to me through Facebook? Yeah. I'm sorry. That that private chat we okay. have won't let me copy it. How stupid is that? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's thinking about these things. You know, it's like, come on. Perfect. Yeah, I'll be able to uh, screen share right. this with people right now. Actually, so awesome. okay. let's start from the top, and I will be following with screen share. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Um, let me see. There you go. Yeah. Deborah Silver Silverman. Again, one of the crowd favorites. Um, she's awesome. So funny, so entertaining, and such a great teacher. Um, and she will have her talk is entitled Don't Change the Channel. Everything goes in cycles. Uh, she's been very much on this, um, you know, for, for people who weren't so happy about the election outcome, she's been very much in a mode of it's okay. This is all, you know, part of the plan and just it's going to be OK. Just hang in there. So that's been a lot of her messaging recently. Um, Adam, Adam Gaines, Gainsburg from 233, to 3, the year personal reality gets way more personal. I can't wait to hear what he means by that. Um, so he's basically talking about how to identify if you are perpetuating your past or creating your future. I love this. You know, how to know if you're stuck in cycles or if you're actually creating something new. The limitations of per personal beliefs and how to start choosing when there is nowhere else to hide. Uh, so that sounds super interesting. Anne Orderly is going to be on at three o'clock, playing with fire, constructing your life, two themes for 2017. So she's going to be talking about how to work with cardinal T-squares, 
how to harvest the fire energy to illuminate your vision, how to work with the eclipses in fire and air, and what Venus retrograde wants to teach us about love and money. So that's going to be another interesting one. Monique Loring, she is just this like deep old soul. She's so wise and so beautiful. I can't wait to hear what she has to say as well. Um, she lives in France and she's going to be up very late at night, her time to deliver this forecast to us. She's going to do 2017, the year of revelation, truth, and your creative force. So um, she's talking about the Aquarius Leo axis, the impact of the conjunction of of the diamond and Pluto on a personal and on a global level. She has something called diamond astrology that she talks about a lot. Um, the impact of Neptune in aspect with the black sun and the diamond on a personal and a global level. So another deep one. I think we're going to be in for some amazing information, you guys. Um, Kathy Beale, riding the rockets of change, the firepower of Saturn Uranus. I think she's the only one covering that angle of 2017. Um, so she's calling it the defining aspect of 2017, the high energy collaboration between Saturn um, and Uranus, how to forecast their probable course out of the upheaval. Um, so one of the things she's been talking about is the upheaval that a lot of us have been experiencing in the last five years. And um, what's that? how is that going to translate into our life going forward? It's kind of like a lot of us have done a lot of work and now it's a moving forward time. Um, tips for harnessing their firepower and windows for when their influence is hottest. Very awesome. Um, Divine Harmony, another amazing, wise being. She talks so much about um, the goddess, the, the goddess asteroids in astrology. So she's very focused on the divine feminine. A lot of, a lot of archetypal, um, you know, psychological background um, Harmony has. So she's talking about um, the numerology, astrology, about 27 being the number one in numerology, like David was talking about before. Um, awesome. And how the intense, yeah, water energy that requires that we do the deep inner emotional and spiritual work. So some, some astrologers talk, talking about the fire energy, Harmony here talking about the water energy. So it's going to be an awesome lineup. So that's just Thursday. And then we got uh, Friday, the 13th, by the way. I realized that when I was driving down the street the other day. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to be doing the Friday, the 13th uh, webinar. It's going to be pretty intense. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't even realize that until you just said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, after the full moon, I think the moon actually will be in Leo. So I'm actually looking forward to it. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, and of course, David's going to be last on that day. Um, saving the best for last. Uh, Tom Jacobs is... I'm going to be starting us off at 2 o'clock Pacific, defining who you are into the Aquarian age. Um, and so he's also another like psychological astrologer, really deep and, and awesome. So this forecast, he's going to frame the longer planetary movements in terms of current individual and collective spiritual evolution from one astrological age to the next. And then he's going to talk about Pluto and Capricorn and how it's asking us um, who runs and is in charge of our life. The Neptune in Pisces asking us to connect with both truth and the collective. And Uranus Aries, uh, Eris in Aries daring us to speak up for ourselves without apology, shame, or doubt. So he's going to be great too. Donna Woodwell, she is the Astrology Hub Managing Editor. She's also... Um, a shamanic astrologer, which is a very cool angle in astrology. She is, her talk is titled The Mystic's Dream, Magician's Power, Jupiter's Sojourn into Scorpio, which just sounds so um, cool. Yeah, go, get it, Donna, get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So she's talking in October 2017, Jupiter, Jupiter enters Scorpio, beginning a year of healing renewal from what Mars tore down in 2016. Learn how we can use this time to prepare for the major shifts arriving in 2020. Another reference to 2020 there. Which brings us to Maurice Fernandez. And actually, yeah, yeah, he's at three. So he's gonna be at three Pacific. Um, he is gonna be doing the 27, the countdown to 2020. How 2017 is the year of potent eclipses what the Jupiter, Uranus, Saturn triangle is, and how 2017 is leading to the historical 2020 events to come. What's amazing to me is that there's there's 13 different astrologers and there's so many aspects of a year that to cover, and they're all going to be covering these different angles that's going to inform us. So 
Um, all right, David Cochran, another favorite. I know him personally. Um, I know him personally. Yeah, he's so cool. <laughs> Um, so he's going to be talking about predicting the future with vibrational astrology. So that's his thing is vibrational astrology. Um, he's going to cover some meditations and affirmations for reinventing and rediscovering ourselves. He's going to give us practical tools to attune to the music of the spheres. He's going to give us some exercises to liberate our creativity and keys to finding our soulmate. You know, I had him, he does a lot with um, astro cartography as well. And I had him look at my chart in different areas of the world and, and what it meant for me. And um, that's a really cool thing to do if you haven't done that before, for those of you who are listening. So um, he's, he's really great. And I, the whole soulmate thing is part of his, his uh, focus, too. Ariel, we talked about what she's going to be talking about already, the year of passionate activism. She'll be talking about Venus in 2017. And then we must be getting to Natasha next. Can you scroll up a little bit, David? Yeah. All right. So Natasha, Natasha actually is the woman who is responsible for the, the first woman. She, she's the first person. David, you were the second person. But uh, Natasha is the first person who did a reading for me. She's on the big island. She is incredible. She is, I call her basically like my fairy godmother at this point in life. Um, she's, she is constantly informing me on what's going on and why life feels so crazy most of the time. Um, so she is very much focused on the spiritual aspects of astrology. So her talk is entitled Spiritual Upgrades of 2017, How to Harness Astrological Energies of the Year for Personal Growth and Evolution, What the Spiritual Potency of Saturn Uranus Trine is and Ways to Maximize Its Influence, and then how to identify the Saturn Uranus transit through houses and its practical implications. Mm. Yeah. So she's the she's the big deal over there on the island with you, huh? She is. She is. She's amazing. She's from Russia. You just you she talks and you just want to sit and listen to her talk forever. She's she's so incredible. So I love introducing the audience to to different astrologers too. I mean, that's part of what I love about this job is that you know, that it is a hub and we really are giving a platform to all these different astrologers and, and making sure that their voices are heard. So it's really, for me, just such a joy to highlight, especially people like you and Natasha, who also have had such a personal impact on my life. Um, so then, of course, <laughs> then we're on to you. The nodes changing after Venus retrogrades at zero point. So all about cosmology, which you talked about in your Las Vegas event. So I'm excited to hear what angle you bring to the forecast tomorrow or Friday. The art of learning how to understand what the universe is saying and how to be fully inspired to live your life destiny, which you model for us so well. Oh, that's so, very kind of you to say that. Well, it's true. <laughs> it is. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I keep directing people. People keep saying, where's the link? Where's the link? And the link is literally just go to the picture on my Facebook. And it's pretty simple to find on my Facebook. I'll actually show everybody so they can see if they go to my Facebook. Uh, well, we don't we do love to see Amanda. But here we'll look at this again. Go to my Facebook. There's a picture right here. Um, forecast marathon. Um, or actually, you can scroll down. I, I brought, oh, there it is, right here. It's a couple posts down, and there's a link on it right there. And the link will take you to the sign up where you can reserve my free spot. When you put, click reserve your free spot, you put in your first name, your email address, and you reserve the spot. It's that simple. Pretty easy. Awesome. I'd love to hear, too, if people can chat in who they're most excited to hear from. I'm just curious. So if you guys want to share um, you know, who, who you're excited to hear the forecast from, I'd love that information. Yeah, she would love to know everybody in the chat who you guys are uh, excited to see. And uh, the, there's like a seven second uh, delay. Every, the first person said all. Everybody's like, all people. <laughs> <laughs> and also let me know what topics too, because I'm going to be interviewing them. So if there's anything specific that you are really interested in hearing about, uh, I'd love to, you know, steer the conversation in the directions that are the most helpful for all of you. So we've got uh, Leo King himself, Deborah and David, Deborah, David and Fairy Godmother, Anne Orderly. Um, they are all wonderful. 
Um, all of them because I've never heard of most of them. Um, David Palmer and Deborah Silverman, uh, all, and everybody's saying spiritual side. You know, everybody wants to know the spiritual side of things. You know what, David? We did a survey to the Astrology Hub community, and I was so happy about that. It was it was overwhelming that people responded that one of the things that they are most interested in why they like astrology and why they study astrology and why they're into astrology is because of the spiritual angle. And it was um, spiritual development and personal growth were the two things that people were hands down the most interested in and the reason why they are into astrology, which I just have to say, I mean, it's the same reason why I love astrology. It's the same reason why I feel so excited to be bringing the message of astrologers out to the world. I feel like it's so relevant and potent, but that everyone else feels that way too was just, it was really affirming. It was awesome. I mean, it's so awesome because that's, I think, what got a lot of people into astrology. It's not so cookie cutter anymore. People want the deeper stuff. A lot of people are saying they want to know more about the nodes. One person said Jupiter and Scorpio. Um, uh, another person asked, how do people get access to the talks after they're done live? Okay. That's a great question. Um, and it's, it's bringing us into what's happening after the forecast, which is we are launching a very exciting new program called the year of astrology. And it's actually featuring the same 13 astrologers that are a part of the forecast. Uh, so you'll get to learn more about that tomorrow during the two forecast days. But one of the bonus gifts when you sign up for the Year of Astrology is the entire library of forecast recordings. So you'll be able to get that for free when you sign up for the Year of Astrology. Oh, very nice. So I hope that answered the question for everybody there. Um, but you know what? A lot of people just saying the spiritual thing. That's what they want. Spiritual angle is key. A lot of people, more people are saying Jupiter and Scorpio is interesting to them than anything. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. I wonder why. If you want to tell us why, that's that would be great to know, too. Uh, a lot of people. Because Adana's going to cover it. Yeah. A lot of other people are also saying uh, soulmates, uh, which will be covered. David's going to be talking about that. Uh, um, another person is saying, I would like to hear how this relates to being grounded. Um, somebody also said, uh, there's a lot of comments here, um, twin flames and how they are connected in the chart. So a lot of relationship, Jupiter, Scorpio, which it's interesting, Jupiter and Scorpio kind of has that twin flame, you know, passionate, deep connection, um, angle. So it, a lot of people are, I think already starting to feel that's coming this year. Um, uh, so many questions. It's crazy. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Pisces uh, with Neptune and Pisces. That's another thing. Uh, uh, Venus and Mars conjunction, which already happened. Or that's coming up uh, very soon, actually. So it's going to be a good time. I'm excited, Amanda. Super excited. Me too. And... I mean, again, everyone on this that, that's watching us right now, we're all, we've all been influenced by your work. So it's going to be really fun to see what you come up with. Oh, I know. Believe me, I've been uh, working in my magical little lair here at Leo King Studios trying to figure out a way and a different angle to show you guys <laughs> how I'm going to do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome you know um yeah no i'm excited well you know what i can come through the the comments below this too and just you know take take all of your feedback and make sure that we cover as much of it as we can but make sure you show up live so you can ask questions to the astrologers directly as we're on air tomorrow and friday yeah i would like to say this because coming from somebody who's an astrologer who does it it's so much more fun doing these presentations when you have people there and are asking questions. It makes the whole experience that much better. And I've noticed from the last summits I've done with Astrology Hub, it's intense. There's a lot of people. I mean, there's been over a thousand people at some of them. I heard that, you know, we've got thousands of people coming to this thing. So we have the last time I checked, we were over 5,500. Yeah. So, so 5, I mean, we're going to have a big crowd. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like almost a stadium. You know, we got it's it's 
it makes it as an astrologer really fun when everybody's synergized and everybody's wanting to talk about astrology because sure as an astrologer i might have my presentation but i love winging it i love taking a question and taking it to the presentation or whatever that just makes it so much more fun so Oh, totally. The astrologers feed off the energy. It makes the whole event so much more interesting and engaging. So yeah, definitely show up live, show the astrologers your support, ask your questions, you know, chat in your feedback. It's, um, it's, it, it's it, like David said, it's, it's really fun when we can all get together and coming together with our shared interest in astrology and spirituality um, just, you know, gives it a depth. And I think so many of us are studying astrology or into astrology and spirituality, and you can really feel like you're out on an island by yourself at times. Um, as I'm saying, from an island, I'm, I'm on Maui right now. Um, but this way, we can all feel connected to each other, and we can come together and really support each other. And you know, the more lights that are lit across the world, um, the better for all of us. So we can come together and uh, connect and support the astrologers, and let them support us and. It's just a beautiful energy exchange that way. Yeah, it's not Gilligan's Island anymore. You know, we can finally uh, connect and get out and, and, and connect to all people and uh, move into this beautiful energy. And I, it's like, I think so many people are a little timid about what's coming up uh, 2017, but there's nothing really to be scared about. I mean, I really... David, I think it's... I think it's like a little bit of PTSD. I'll, I'll speak for myself, <laughs> but I feel like it's every year. It's like, okay, this year is going to be intense. And then we go through these years that are so intense. It's like, oh God, is this going to happen again? I was even talking to my fairy godmother and she was like, well, you know, you have some really interesting aspects happening in 2017 and it's, it's going to be intense. And I, I kind of took the, you know, I did the big sigh and she says, no, not, not in a bad way. And I said, I know I'm just, you know, the intense thing, I'm just kind of, I'm used to it at this point, but there's a little bit of like PTSD because it hasn't been the easiest time, you know? Well, I'll say this. As an astrologer, and if you look at the astrology, we've been dealing with the nodes in, in Virgo and Pisces. And so Virgo, when the North Node is there, you could get really tired. These are the two signs that we're being tired, whether you're tired from scrubbing the, the toilet to tired like Pisces, like you just drank all night or that you just meditated for five hours. However you want to look at it, both rule this like very high on things and then really low on things in a weird way. The fact of uh, that we're finishing this stuff in Pisces and Virgo, there tends to be this kind of like, well, F it. I kind of just want to just can I get a break, please? Like that's kind of <laughs> totally. that's kind of the energy. Like I just want to break. I just don't want to do anything. And. But, but, but then there's this, I have to get up, put my bootstraps on and get to work and do things. And I was telling somebody the other day, like the reason why, especially since 2008, every year just seems to be intense and difficult. And it, I mean, Pluto's in Capricorn. Capricorn's not a sign that's very uh, easy. But you know what? If people see behind the hard work at the fruition, that is, I mean, look at what you've created um, I'm happy what I've created with the Leo King, even though it's hard work and I'm sure it's hard work for you and for other people out there and the lives they're creating. It's not easy, but the fruits of that hard work is amazing. And this is what these periods are about, you know? And so even this year, Pluto's in Capricorn. So there will be hard work. It's not like it's going to be, you know, a break for, you know, five years where you just don't do anything or something. People are expecting that, but it's going to be a much easier year to do the work with a, with a chip of happiness on your face, I believe, finally. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's good. So a little bit more joy in doing the work is what you're saying. That's exactly what I would be saying is there's more joy into it. And, and, and there's also – south. and I, this is what my talk's going to be about. South Node and Aquarius is learning to disconnect. I mean – Part of ourselves is going to have to learn to let go of the story that is hard. People, we're going to have to learn to, you know, bring love to the story instead of bring, you know, uh, that this sucks. We have to actually like love that it sucks, you know. Um, so it, it's going to be an interesting cycle to learn about because 
we can learn to take what sucks and turn it into gold. That's what an alchemist does, turns lead into gold. There's the aspect of Aquarius Leo, which is teaching us to take situations we want to disconnect from, but yet make them into amazing, golden, beautiful, loving, powerful things. You know, the sun just doesn't turn into, uh, you know, it turns into a black hole in many ways. This is turning a black hole into a sun, you know? It's like kind of the reverse aspect, I would say. Hmm. I love that. Well, and that's what Harmony's talk is entitled, right? 2017 is the year of alchemy. Yeah. It's a g so it sounds like she's talking on that same type of theme. Well, for everybody, just to f finish up here, if you want to get on the Astrology Hub uh, forecast for the next two days, go right now into my Facebook. It's a couple posts down. You'll see the two pictures of the Astrology Hub uh, forecast with all the astrologers. Click the link. Put in your email, put in your name, and you are, you are signed up and you can watch for free. The next two days are going to be awesome, starting from 2 p.m. Pacific Thursday all the way to 6 p.m. Pacific uh, tomorrow and on Friday the 13th, 2 p.m. Pacific to 6 p.m. Uh, on Friday. So it's going to be exciting. Over 5,500 people have signed up. So it's going to be pretty awesome to see this. Um, and thanks so much for doing this uh, and putting this on for everybody, Amanda. My pleasure. My pleasure. And thanks to you, David, for letting us get the word out. And to all of you in the Leo Kings audience, thanks so much for all of your support. And I can't wait to connect with you over the next couple of days. It's going to be a lot of fun. Woohoo! Well, Woohoo! All, right. all right. Well, thanks so much, Amanda. It was great to see you. And thank you for everybody out there uh, that was watching uh, via Astrology Hub or the Leo King Network. Truly appreciate it. And we will see you guys all later. And sending you guys lots of love. See you in the next day. Adios. Talk to you then. Bye. The Leo King app is the world's first and leading video and notification astrology horoscope app for iPhone, Android, and computer. Get daily spiritual videos and addictingly accurate notifications alongside weekly sun sign horoscopes, tarot videos, and exciting new age entertainment videos by celebrity astrologer and TV personality David Palmer, the Leo King. Join today. You have nothing to lose with a seven-day free trial and wake up to astrology like you've never seen before. Wake up to astrology like you've never seen.